back to Good Day. So, Amanda, how old is, is Poppy? He's going to be 10 next month. Well, he's getting he's up. He's growing. There. He's getting up. Yeah. Almost 70. Oof. Well, <laughs> like people, pets who are getting to be uh, or are seniors may need a little more medical care. Dr. Brooke West of West Toledo Animal Hospital and Planned Pet Hoods Jennifer Herbert and Abby join us this morning. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for being here today. Yes, thank, thank, you. thank you. So we were just chatting. Yeah. Abby's 12 years old. Correct. Oh, tell us a little bit about Abby. Um, Abby was originally. Um, adopted by plan uh, through plan pethood to her owner and unfortunately um, Abby's owner passed away and mm -hmm. plan pethood always takes their animals back mm -hmm. so Abby came to us and uh, she's currently 12 12 and a half and um, she went under medical care with dr. West mm -hmm. so and you all are looking to kick off the campaign better together tell us a little Correct. bit about that yes yeah, so we're just trying to um, bring together the community and um, make an outreach program in order to bring awareness to Jerry and uh, their needs and their special um, <laughs> circumstances that they require and just trying to bring more attention to that and working together with both our rescues and our community. You know, so <clears throat> as the dogs get older, we notice in this just this past year with yeah. our dog, uh, his eating habits changed a little bit, not wanting to eat as much, not liking his food as much as he likes the table scraps, eat that any, anytime, <laughs> um, a little bit of arthritis. Yes. You know, so what are some of the things that pet owners should be looking for and how should be they be taking care of their pets right so with with seniors they can be kind of subtle sometimes mm -hmm. in their changes and sometimes those can be arthritis and uh, aging changes dental disease as well as um, the the need for them to have you know looking into their laboratory work because their changes can come pretty subtle and mm -hmm. then we, if we could stay on top of those things then we are able to better treat them in their long-term needs for mm -hmm. for um, their care and what their what their problems are and what their issues may mm -hmm. arise to come about so it's just important you know there's subtle changes in you know their gates their lethargy their eating their drinking um, all of the changes that can occur as they start to get older but may not be as noticeable um, to a pet owner you know when you're with them day to day yeah I can only imagine uh, similar to humans preventative preventative care is something uh, that's highly important so uh, for those pet owners uh, what would you advise as uh, they cross that threshold of seven years old sure so we, we recommend more visits to the veterinarian, uh, at least twice a year, because they age much faster than we do. And so we like to uh, be doing an exam on them, getting some labs on them, uh, dental care, you know, promoting help with arthritis. We have so much advancement in this department mm. where we have rehab and chiropractic and acupuncture and all the things that weren't once available for our pets are now there and are really remarkable in terms of the things that we can do with them. Because <clears throat> not only do we want them to live for Forever. Yes. And they will, right? Um, <laughs> we want them to be comfortable. Correct. Uh, you know, and so how will this program, how can people get connected and how are you all, you know, working together here? Yes, yeah, so um, this program is just trying to bring awareness to mm -hmm. the community, help you um, to increase communication, mm -hmm. help to provide resources um, and support, and then also obviously professional opinion. And then on top of that, we're, we're working with our local rescue to help um, help get the, the word out about geriatrics and help to increase the t statistics on that in order to make them better and healthier for mm -hmm. a longer life. Yeah, open communication is so important. And, and let's talk about fostering for a little bit uh, for those mature uh, pets. <laughs> uh, why is that so important that folks foster them? So it just gives us another space. We aren't a brick and mortar, so therefore when somebody takes a foster into their home um, to foster, we're able to take another dog, you know what I mean, out of need, out of the community, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be community um, outreach, that, like in this case that the owner passed away or can no longer care for their pets or just the local dog wardens, right, that, you know what I mean, are overpopulated yeah. in shelters. You know, and I think you talked about open communication too. <clears throat> I think that... Uh, we need to keep an eye and work with the, the vets because at some point, we're probably gonna have to make a decision, right? Yeah. And how do you how do you help pet owners through that? So that's a that's a good question. I mean, a lot of times it's a quality of life discussion, mm -hmm. and we have a very long survey that we like to go over with our pet owners uh, to help them with that that process, and to kind of um, highlight, you know, what are the good days, what are the bad, and how can we help to make these. Um, 
better days um, for what we have left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Better Together, this is kicking off in June. So uh, how, are, uh, how do you want people to get involved in this? How are you all going about this? So we're just trying to promote it through um, education. Mm -hmm. We're trying to uh, outreach to our clients and potential clients to help them um, make these decisions and to mm -hmm. get more awareness about the statistics of this and to help you know, get them to that next level. So we're launching that June 1st in hopes of, you know, getting uh, better together. Yeah, and, and, and it's going to help just with the quality of life Correct. of these pets. And then, too, for pet owners to still have their pets yes. around and able to move and uh, not see them in pain is going to be highly beneficial. Yeah. Correct. That's been tricky for us this year. You yes. know, we're like, oh, he's hobbling. I mean, the winter, yeah, winter wasn't easy, and he's starting to do a little bit better now. But, yeah, we, you know, met with his vet and talked about different options and I think um, he's gonna be with us forever yeah and, and I do find <laughs> it five years at least I do find this interesting Amanda <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Uh, West uh, mentioned mm -hmm. uh, the pets being able to go to the chiropractor yeah. uh, so that's uh, another mm -hmm. form of treatment Correct. that pets can get yes yep we have an um, animal chiropractor on our staff um, Dr. Sam she does an amazing job um, there's lots of uh, avenues within the chiropractic you know which we never had before physical mm -hmm. therapy for dogs underwater treadmill which we have mm. uh, wow. laser therapy <laughs> yeah. shock wave you know we have so many new advancements to help mm -hmm. these older guys and not have to be on medications <clears throat> long term mm -hmm. um, acupuncture, you know, all of the things that are available to us are really available now to our pets. So some natural forms of treatment. Too. Correct. Yeah, really good. Yeah, and we and we will do anything. Yes. <laughs> we'll do anything for our animals. Yeah. Won't we? <laughs> yes, Ladies, we do. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do. Thank you. Well,